Hello again to my 251 group. I'm going to lecture today on the urinary system, chapter 23. And as just as in so many of these organ systems now, in the later part of the book, the anatomy is relatively straightforward, but the physiology gets quite difficult. And I am not able to uh, lecture all of the details of the physiology. You're going to have to do a lot of that on your own. So please start by uh, printing off the study guide that's on page 921. And I've also furnished you uh, with a list of other figures and tables that I hope you get a chance to uh, photocopy so you can look at those while you study or while you listen to me here. Section 23.1 is the general uh, functions of the kidney. The urinary system is rel relatively straightforward, as I said. It, it contains or con is composed of two kidneys, two ureters, the tubes that carry urine down to the urinary bladder, and then finally, you, the urethra, which carries the, the urine uh, to the outside. There are many functions, many different functions of the kidneys, and they are listed in page 890. Your author lists eight. Uh, I am not going to just read these to you, but I want you to look at them and try to remember them when time comes again for your test. Um, one of the functions is to remove lots of waste products from the body. Here we are talking about metabolic waste. These are waste products that are produced by the body itself. Some of the worst are called nitrogenous wastes. These have at least one uh, nitrogen atom in them. Uh, and if these build up, these can make you extremely ill and even cause death. If you look at uh, the figure 23.1 and 23.2 on page 891, you will first see the normal urinary system, both anterior and posterior views, and then you will see four of these nitrogenous wastes, and you have most likely heard these names. No, you won't have to memorize the structures, but just remember that they all have a nitrogen atom in them, at least one. Another uh, function of the kidney is excretion of these wastes. They, we take the, the kidneys take the waste out of the, whoops, sorry. Call for plus one eight one two eight. Sorry, sorry. They remove the waste products from the blood and then excrete it to the outside. Those are two of the most common and best known uh, functions of the kidneys, but as I said, your author uh, lists eight, so please read th those over. Section 23.2 is more uh, detailed about the anatomy of the kidney. Uh, look at figure 23.4 on page 893, and this shows a photograph uh, of a kidney that's been split in a set frontal section, and then a drawing that shows more detail uh, of the general anatomy uh, of, a, of one of the kidneys. They are each the same, basically, uh, just mirror images of each other. I want you to have memorized from on page 23, or on figure 23.5, memorize the renal circulation, starting with the aorta to the renal arteries and then on down 
smaller and smaller and smaller arteries and then arterioles ending up in the glomerulus that we'll talk about and show you just in a moment here. And then back to the capillaries and on back to the inferior vena cava, taking the blood back uh, to the uh, heart. The nephron is the name given to the functional unit of the kidney. It is many more than just one cell. So remember, it is a functional unit. Um, and we'll show you one nephron again in another page or two. Microcirculation is shown on, in figure 23.6, page 895. Uh, you can see that when it gets down to the fine, fine microscopic details, that the microcirculation is very, very complex as well. Look primarily at the two uh, small spheres of uh, capillaries. These are called the glomeruli, single being glomerulus. Each is surrounded uh, by a renal corpuscle figure 23.7 on page 896. There is one glomerulus and one renal corpuscle showing blood flowing in, in an afferent arter arteriole and then blood flowing back out uh, through an efferent arteriole. The, uh, the, orig or the initial part of blood filtration takes place in the internal part of each glomerulus. Okay, so look at those and memorize the details. I'm sure you will have one, two, or three of those that you'll have to identify in your examination. The uh, renal tubule is shown uh, on page 897, figure 23.8. On the far left hand in the upper part, you will see the glomerulus surrounded by the renal corpuscle with the two arterioles, one leading in, one leading out. Then you will see a network of tubules. It starts with the proximal convoluted tubule. Convoluted means they go in all kinds of directions. And then there is a loop that goes down into the internal part of the kidney. And this is called the nephron loop. It has a descending limb as well as an ascending limb. Part of the uh, loop is thicker than others. And this all has to do with the physiology and the chemistry that we'll show you briefly here in just a moment. Finally, uh, the distal convoluted tubule opens into the collect collecting duct. The collecting duct then contains nothing but urine and all the thousands and thousands of collected ducts all eventually uh, empty into the ureter that, that takes the urine down into the urinary bladder. Part C of figure 23.8 shows that there are actually two different general kinds of nephrons. And this has to do again with the physiology. There is a cortical nephron shown at the top where the nephron loop uh, does not go into the medulla of the kidney very far. It is mostly in the cortex. Then there is the juxtamedullary nephron. And most of the nephron loop for this kind of a nephron does go down into the medulla uh, of the kidney itself. 
just as I said about the blood supply, once you're memorizing the blood supply uh, to the kidney and to the corpus, renal corpuscle, I also want you memorizing the pathway of fluid. And this is um, shown on the bottom of page 896. And it starts with the words, the flow of fluid with lots and lots of arrows. You can look at the figure 23.8 as you are reading that and you will see uh, the path of fluid. And then finally, urine. Remember, you, we don't call it urine until it is actually into the collecting duct. Okay, there are several different mechanisms. This is the physiology, and this is quite detailed and quite uh, complex. I just want you to know that there are three major functions that take place now after the glomerulus and before the urine goes into the ureter. These three different functions or three different uh, uh, parts of the physiology are glomerular filtration, then there is reabsorption, and finally there is secretion. I cannot go in detail. You would be bored out of your mind, but I do want you to go over the photo or the figures that I've had you copy. Look at those as you're going through the different reading sections. The filtration membrane itself is in the glomerulus. And there are uh, three different major forces that will, or pressures rather, that will decide how much filtration takes place. And these are shown on page 899. And if you go back to page 761 in chapter 20, you will see the similar uh, pressures there. You have a blood hydrostatic pressure, and this is the highest pressure. And opposing that is the hydrostatic pressure in the capsular space and what is called the colloidal osmotic pressure. If we look at the sum total of these, you will determine the net filtration pressure. In that example there, it showed a net filtration pressure of only 10 millimeters of mercury. Um, figures 23, 10, 11, and 12, again, just show you various parts of the filtration that takes place in the glomeruli. Now, what regulates this? The glomerular filtration rate, the total of all of the uh, rates that take place in all of the glomeruli must be uh, regulated. They cannot be too little or too small. Your author describes these in one paragraph each. Page 901, renal autoregulation. This is the blood flow into and out of the glomerulus, a myogenic mechanism, and a tubuloglomerular filtrate. There is also sympathetic uh, nervous system control. Sympathetic nerve fibers richly innervate the renal blood vessels, making them contract and or uh, dilate. There is also a renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism. These are three different hormones that, take pl that are uh, very, very instrumental in helping determine just how much uh, filtration actually takes place in all of the glomeruli. And I want you to read through that again, memorize those names, renin, angiotensin, 
and aldosterone. Next, section 23.4 is tubular reabsorption and secretion. Your author covers these in one section. Various amounts of very important things must be resorbed. Things that were fil filtered out initially, such as glucose, sodium, potassium, chloride, other ions and, and uh, molecules, we do not want to lose those. And these are reabsorbed from the um, convoluted tubules back into a peritubular capillary. Uh, reabsorption is shown in figure 23.16. It is very complex. Each of those round reddish circles is an active transport mechanism that requires energy. So not only is this complex, but it also requires a lot of energy for all of these particles, anions, ions, atoms, etc., to be reabsorbed. Finally, there is tubular secretion. There, this is where many other waste products are secreted into the final fluid that will then leave the kidney and leave the body itself. These also take place in the tubules. Um, okay, and that's shown mostly in on page 909, uh, figures 23.19 and 23.20. Water reabsorption, um, Now, got some of that backwards and mixed up, but you'll just have to deal with it. You'll find out when you get to looking at your book here and looking at the figures that I had you copy. This is very, very complex. Um, I learned it once in medical school, but then I did not retain it because I decided that I was not going to be a nephrologist. A nephrologist is an internal me medicine specialist who deals with who deals strictly with patients that have kidney and or urinary bladder problems. If you are very very um, good with memorization with a photographic memory, and you are planning to go to medical school, you might just try to memorize figure 23.21. This shows on page 910. This shows you the functional relationship of the nephron loop, the vasorecta, and the collecting duct. The numbers are the uh, the osmolarity of this extracellular fluid measured from 100 down through uh, 1,200 milliosmoles per liter. And I am just kidding. You do not need to even try, think about memorizing that. Okay, there's the picture I was referring to. It got put in there in a strange place, figure 23.22 on page 911 shows you where certain solutes and which solutes are reabsorbed. These go back into the bloodstream. And then finally, in a pinkish color, I don't know what color that is exactly, I didn't have that color in my crayon box. It's sort of pink. These show you what ions and different molecules are then actively secreted 
uh, into the tubules and into the collecting duct. There are many different uh, severe problems that can occur in the kidneys and or ureter and bladder. Probably the most important or mo the most common that you've heard of are uh, kidney stones, ureteral stones that cause a tremendous amount of pain. Um, hopefully none of you have had one, but the odds are uh, that you will at some point in your life. Section 23.6 just shows some of the tests. Some are very simple, some are quite complex that specialists can use to determine uh, the state of function of the uh, kidneys themselves. I do not need for you to memorize these, but I want you to, again, to at least have some familiarity. Famili yeah, I want you familiar with some of these tests. One of the most common is just a simple urinalysis, and that can be done very, very simply. One step hard, more difficult is if you take that urine it was, that was collected and then look at it under a microscope. You can also measure urine volume. Um, then there are several renal function tests that are listed in page 913. Uh, these, not, these are not sh to determine just are you making urine, yes or no, but are your kidneys doing what they are supposed to be doing? Finally, in section 23.7, we discuss urinary storage and elimination. But all I'm going to say is that in normal functioning urinary system, we have two ureters that lead down to the urinary bladder and then one urethra that exits the urinary bladder uh, to the outside. The, this is discussed in section 23.7. The anatomy is shown in figure 23.23 for both females and males. Uh, neurologically, this is a little bit complex as well as um, anatomic, well, anatomically, it's a little bit more simple, but physiologically and neurologically, it gets a little more complex because there is involuntary, there are several involuntary reflexes as well as necessary voluntary control that allow us to store and then eliminate the urine uh, when we choose to and when is the most appropriate. That is all I'm going to say about section 23. Thank you to those few of you who have stayed through my discussion. Bye.